Today is titled Curbing LoRa, uh, a new physical layer design for LoRa networking. While 5G will be useful for, for many bandwidth-intensive IoT deployments, it cannot be a good choice uh, for those large-scale IoT applications, such as agriculture, the e-health, oil, gas, and uh, some transportation industries, which only require uh, a small amount of data uh, communicated at a low-power manner. Usually, it's a lower one network. Driven by this demand, uh, LoRaWAN networks has grown and operates globally uh, with millions of LoRa devices, um, and it could dominate the non-cellular low-power wide, uh, low wide area connections by 2026. However, its simple Mac layer uh, with Aloha systems makes the decoding suffer from the uh, concurrent transmissions. That means the end nodes simply transmit whenever they need, and as a result, uh, massive collisions results in the decoding failure as a gateway side, and uh, that's the throughput degradation. Before I introduce my work, uh, please allow me to introduce the LoRa's background, especially its physical layer design, uh, that is the chirp spread spectrum. Here, the chirp signal indicates the signal whose frequency increases linearly over time which can be observed by the spectrogram of the chirp symbol. It has two configurations, the bandwidth and the spreading factors. So from the transmitter side to the gateway side, uh, we can adopt the D-chirp for decoding. Upon receiving, the, upon receiving the chirp signals, we can multiply it with the base down chirp, shown as the green line here. And in this way, we can concentrate the energy into a single frequency beam. So by adopting the FFT, we can, encode the, we can decode the data by detecting the energy peak on the spectrum. Actually, in case of no clearance, everything works well. We can just encode the data at the transmitter side uh, into the initial frequency of the chirp symbol, say F0. As a gateway side, we can adopt the D-chirp processing to detect the energy peak on the spectrum, uh, which is B0, which corresponds to the in encoded initial frequency at the transmitter side, uh, that is F0. However, uh, things become different in case of collisions. As we can see, when two chirps just collide with each other, we cannot, de we cannot detect the NG peak of the targeting chirp, the red one, reliably, because it can be overwhelmed by the interference chirp symbol. As a result, we could inevitably have collisions with two concurrent uh, LoRa packets, shown here, and the decoding failure results in a throughput degradation. It can suffer more from the decoding ambiguity uh, with massive concurrences, especially at the low SNR and SR conditions, because it's really hard to decode the weak targeting signals. Actually, uh, LoRa's collision issue has been uh, a hot research topic since 2017, which covers the physical layer design and Mac layer design. However, it uh, all suffers from different environmental factors, such as low SNR, low SIR, or even just introduce extra uh, complexity and cost to the simple LoRa networking stack. We start thinking about the root cause of the collision issues, which, with the chirp symbol shown here. Uh, when we align the operation window, with the chirp symbol, it can form a NG peak on the spectrum as expected. However, for those interfered chirp symbols, which are usually misaligned with the chirp with the operation window, it can still form an NG peak. We can understand this phenomenon from a high level uh, uh, opinion. As you can see, that for the overlapping part, no matter it's aligned or misaligned, uh, the, the operation window is always up down symmetrical with the chirp symbol. So we have a question. So how about replacing the linear chirp with its nonlinear counterparts? As you can see, when we just align the operation window with the nonlinear chirp symbol, it can still form an NG peak as well. However, when, we, when the operation window is misaligned with the nonlinear chirp symbol, it cannot focus the energy into a single frequency beam anymore. We call this as a scattering effect of nonlinear chirps. So based on the non scattering effect of nonlinear chirps, uh, the collision issues can be resolved easily. As you can see, uh, when, two, when the symbol A and symbol B collide with each other, 
we can decode them reliably by aligning the operation window with them alternatively. We can improve the throughputs clearly because we don't care about the collision issues anymore. We can have like massive concurrent transmissions and we can still decode or detect the NG peak of the targeting uh, red chirp symbol on the spectrum reliably. So let me give more details about our system. Um, this page is about the formulation for the chirp-based modulation. I have to say that all of the existing works are based on the linear chirp modulation, but for us, we have to formulate the nonlinear chirp modulation at first. As you can see, we just formulize the chirp generation in a polynomial form. So in this way, we can assign different coefficients into the uh, coefficient uh, k. And in this way, we can generate all kinds of chirp symbols from the quadratic form from the, uh, to the quartic form, even like the sine form. So first, um, please allow me to approve the, that the chirp spread spectral modulation, uh, uh, the nonlinear chirp has the same noise tolerance with the linear one. As you can see, no matter is a linear chirp or nonlinear ones, the D chirp processing can always focus the spectral energy into a single frequency beam. And it still detects the NG peak on the spectrum to decode the data. So that means we don't care about the shapes of the uh, chirp symbols. And uh, we can always surprise the noise by focusing the energy on the spectrum. We also do the simulation to evaluate the noise tolerance for the uh, linear chirp and nonlinear chirp. In this figure, we can see that the symbol error rate to the SNR lines uh, overlaps with each other for all types of chirp symbols. So after that, uh, we continue uh, validating that the scattering effect for those misaligned chirp symbols uh, regarding the, in terms of nonlinear chirp symbols. As you can see uh, in this figure, we show that when we align the chirp symbol, uh, when we align the operation window into the chirp symbols, it can always focus the energy into the encoded uh, frequency say F0, and uh, we have the same observation for the nonlinear chirp. However, for those interfered chirp symbols, which uh, usually has like a T gap between the interfered chirp symbols and the operation window, we have to consider its impact on the D chirp processing, shown uh, as you can see the T gap in the equation. For the linear part, no, uh, for the linear part, the D chirp symbol um, doesn't care about uh, it's aligned or, mi or misaligned, it can always, the resulting frequency is a, is a fixed value. That means it can always focus the spectral energy into a single frequency beam. However, for the nonlinear chirps, uh, things become different. As you can see that the resulting frequency after D chirp is time variant. That means that the spectral energy distribution changes over the time. So that can just explain the scattering effects of the nonlinear chirp symbols. We further evaluate the impacts of rise SIRs and the T-gap and different spreading factors. As, as you can see, that the two, uh, the two uh, symbols shown here. First, we evaluate the impact of the T-gap. As you can see, that the red line has a smaller uh, T-gap with the targeting red chirp symbols, so that the height of the NG peak for the red one is closer to the black targeting chirp symbol. However, for the nonlinear chirp, we just sketch the energy of, the, of all of the uh, interfered chirp symbols over the whole spectrum, so we don't care about its impact. And we also evaluate the SIR. As you can see, that when we have like a weak targeting chirp symbols in the collisions, the black targeting chirp symbol uh, can be overwhelmed by the interfered chirp symbol. However, for the nonlinear chirp symbol, the NG peak is much higher than the a spectral energy distribution of those interfered chirp symbols. So in this page, I want to introduce that uh, the nonlinear chirps also extends the orthogonal coding dimension for uh, LoRa networking. Because that even we have like the fully overlapping chirp symbols, we can still decode them reliably. That means uh, for the linear chirp symbol, we can concurrently transmit the uh, all kinds of chirp symbols like the yellow, uh, like the orange one, the blue one, even like the black one, because we can still detect the NG peak on the spectrum reliably. So that means 
we can assign the data bits into the shapes of the chirp symbols to extend the orthogonal coding space for the lower networking. So from this page, I will introduce the implementation and evaluation for our system. And we have three metrics, uh, the symbol error rate, the packet delivery rate, and the throughput. And we just compare our work, the curving LoRa, with the standard LoRa one, the M, uh, the M LoRa, and N scale. For the, the non-linear chirp candidates, we have like four types of chirps. And we care about the noise resilience in, uh, under different SNR conditions and uh, SR conditions and the performance at the campus scale. We evaluate our work for the indoor and outdoor scenarios. So this page just demonstrates the noise tolerance in case of no collisions. As you can see, that the overlapping SER to SNR lines just shows that the, toler the, toler the noise tolerance of nonlinear chirps is same as the linear chirp. So we don't care about the side effect of the, the nonlinear chirp generation regarding the toys tolerance. So in this page, we want to introduce the, uh, the uh, nonlinear chirp modulation just outperforms the linear chirp modulation under lower SIR and SNR conditions. As you can see that to maintain like 1% SER, we have like the nonlinear chirps. Uh, it only requires the, S, the SIR is larger than minus 5 dB. And for the spreading factor 12, uh, the, the SIR threshold is like minus 10 dB. However, for the linear part, to detect NJ peak, we have to require that the targeting chirp symbol is, is, is stronger than the interfere chirp symbol. And we also evaluate the impacts of the SN, as SNR conditions. As you can see, we can achieve the reliable uh, lower transmission, say 1% SER, even under the SN, SNR equals to minus 5 dB or even like minus 15 dB for different spreading factors. So in this page, we just uh, evaluate the performance of our system curving LoRa uh, for the outdoor scenarios. As you can see, due to the decoding failure of the standard LoRa one, the throughput is almost consistent, even we just increase the concurrency. And the state of the art work like M LoRa as N scale, it can it can improve the throughput by three times over the standard LoRa one. And for our work, due to the scattering effect of the nonlinear chirp modulation, we can easily achieve like eight times a throughput uh, gain over the standard LoRa one. And also, I want to note that uh, curving LoRa utilizes the nonlinear chirp modulation. It's orthogonal to all of the existing work which are based on the linear chirp modulation. So that means we can incorporate the M LoRa and N scale into the nonlinear chirp modulation. So this is the last page about the conclusion and future work. Kirby LoRa just proposes a new physical layer design that is a nonlinear chirp modulation to boost the network throughput with concurrent transmissions. In terms of the future work, uh, we want to do more work uh, such as uh, nonlinear chirp selection and the curving LoRa as a higher layer of LoRa, uh, of LoRa networking. And more importantly, like uh, how to utilize the orthogonality of different types of chirps to extend the orthogonal coding space for LoRa networking. Yeah, thank you. <laughs>